understanding, uh, particularly because we're not worthy and we can't earn any of the, the goodness and the blessings that you bestow on us. And as was already mentioned, we have reason for thanksgiving. Although there is suffering in the world, uh, perhaps people that we personally know, uh, family members, friends, maybe even some of our enemies uh, have suffered or are suffering now. Dear Lord, you still have a way that is divine that, that puts goodness on it all, because in the end, uh, it's gonna be your will uh, that uh, prevails. But thank you that we know the victory, that uh, we can uh, rest in that and have peace in that, in regards to what our situations and circumstances are. We ask that you give us strength, the strength that our Lord Jesus had when he was on his way to the cross, that in spite of our future, in spite of our, uh, our uh, situation, in spite of what the world may show us, that the joy, the joy that we have in your presence is worth it all. So we thank you, dear Father, for uh, again, uh, this day that you have made. We do rejoice and we are glad in it. And we thank you for this opportunity to fellowship together. We thank you for the blessings that we know about. And again, the ones that we don't know about. We say these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 And they got you in a, they got you in a barrel uh, today as far as your audio. It, it, it sounds kind of like a... Uh, what does it sound like you, Brother Addison? It sounds like uh, he's trying to chew on the mic. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a barrel sound. It's... it's it's it's, 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 I don't know. Check, just check the audio a little bit on it. <laughs> it's distorting it. Go ahead and come back. Okay, I'll try to re-engage. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, you, 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 uh, every now and then, you tend to sound like Max Hedrum, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you remember who that is? <laughs> Is that the one with the uh, the guy with the talking head? The yeah, the computer generated head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was cool, wasn't it? <laughs> he said he's gonna go ahead and he gonna check his mic out. Hey, what what I want to do, you know, while while we're getting into it, is, you know, we we just had a, a we just coming through this this this, this uh, Thanksgiving, and and you know now we're getting now they're gonna reel into this politics. We know that this for the next two weeks, a lot of people need to be safe, right? Put on those, uh, I, I, you might want to put two masks on, uh, but just be safe because uh, a lot of people probably bring it back and spread it at the uh, COVID-19. Uh, but besides that, we still have the, the the politics still going on. I think, I think you, I guess you keep a track of that uh, concerning the, uh, I guess the some said false claims, some said true claims concerning who won and all that stuff. Uh, some people being angry. Uh, some of the candidates. Have you seen some of the candidates running for uh, the, the Senate seat, the Republican side? Have you seen some of the news clips on them? Yeah, that's, that's all that's on TV. I don't even watch it no more. Yeah, they, and they, with the part I'm sitting there, they're sitting there being angry. You know when the politicians is talking, right? They were like, "Wait, wait a minute! I don't, I, I hear about you, but what about we talking about the president right now? What's what's going on with the president?" <laughs> they want them to say, "I want you to fix that." You know, I hear you want to run for the office. We got you on that, but we want you to fix this situation. So, uh, I guess it's time where, like, the question is about us getting back and united as one country is really what the whole, I think the whole intent needs to be. And I hope we get there. 
for one of the things too is the fact that for the body of Christ is remember that we're supposed to stay focused on the word of God, right? I mean, that's that's our that is our foundation, regardless of different candidates and you know, Senate seats or anything else, is what we consider truth. Because a lot of what you see in politics is, and I guess it has to be, that lies and deceptions and, and, and you name it. Therefore, we can't put our trust in that. We have to put our trust in Christ. And then we need to be true so that other people can see who we are, right? So what I want to start off with, this is John chapter 8. 31 and uh because the whole purpose i want to do is make sure we let the people know when we do a study the whole purpose of our study is to what how do we apply the word of god in our everyday life that that's what's critical so brother addison i got a nice scripture for you to read if you can read that slide for me i appreciate it all right, <clears throat> John eight thirty one. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, well, but the son abideth ever. Uh -huh. If the son therefore shall make you free, Come on, ye now. shall be free indeed. Yes, sir. And I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which ha I have seen with my father, and ye do not that which ye have seen with your father. And you ye do that to, yeah. which, which ye have seen with your father. Amen. We'll, we'll, we'll pick up the, the the next slide in a minute. I want to just pull back on that one. Let me see. I don't get everybody on this cell phone. Now, now what I was looking at that was the fact is. You know when it said the truth will make you free. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the fact is that you know the, you remember old Flip Wilson saying was that the truth will will uh, set you free, right? Mm -hmm. it will set you free, and, and and you know the difference I like about the word make you free makes it to me always implied a a push, a force, taking you somewhere, right? Right? Does that make sense? Is is yeah. pushing you? Is 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 making you go in the right direction? Uh, it it in where it lies and deception does the opposite, right? It it di distracts you, it redirects you into into what I guess some people walking in darkness. So I like the, I like that one part of the scripture saying the truth will make you free. Uh, let me make sure I can see that again too. I can need to look at it. You you don't need to see it, do you? You want to comment on that? I said I just showed it, but you didn't see it again. No. Okay, good, good. So that way you say now. One of the things about in Christianity is saying if you first thirty one said if you continue where in the Word, right? Yes. And that's that's one of the critical things I think as, as a believer is understand we're supposed to stay. I don't care about what's going on in politics. I don't care about what's going on and what you call, you know, somebody said that, and I hate the fact that somebody say, uh, we're now become, the news become our enemy. So now we'll call it, everything fake news, right? And then it's like, okay, we don't have, if we got fake news, we got no news. So, so get rid of the news channel. And, and then we watch what comes out of people's mouth. And we actually say, well, look, are you telling us the truth? And that, that screws it all up too. So the bottom line is that the only thing that's really consistent is he's saying stay in his word. If we're going to be disciples in Christ Jesus is to stay in his word. And then he said, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And that's how I think if we sit there and, and minister the gospel. And I think, Jimmy, you said it one time, some people don't care about the gospel. But I think our consistency is to stay in the word 
and preach that word regardless of what the world thinks. It. Matter of fact, I think about it. When, when the gospel was first preached, did, did people care about the word of God? I mean, did anybody, I mean, on the day of Pentecost, did the people care? See, I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the people that was out there. They had people from all nations, right? All over the place coming to this festival of Pentecost. And they started preaching the gospel. Did the people care about the word of God? I ain't talking about the people that's preaching the word of God and believing the word of God. I'm talking about the world itself. Did they, did they consider it true? Did they consider it real? <clears throat> well, I believe they did to a certain extent, or else they wouldn't have been there. Now, I know it's there for you know which one you talking about. You talking about the, the, the well? You're talking about the, the uh, I'm talking about the world uh, itself when the gospel first started being preached, right? The day of Pentecost, right? They were there okay. the festival. <clears throat> they, well, when you say did they did they care about the word of God? They were there because of the word of God, but not there because oh, yeah. of, okay. of Pentecost. Okay, gotcha. They were there celebrating a religious festival. Right. So then that means that they cared about God's word God's to word. a certain extent. Right. The Old Testament. Right. But they were not there for Pentecost. Right. Or because the obviously they, they, they had no idea of what was going on right. in the gospel. Uh, was just made available to them, right? So, and, but and, after after Pentecost, I would say there were many folks that were there. For the well, Lord I mean, well, you know, the thing is that if you, as we look at the history of the church as it's growing, and even today, there's there's people who don't know the Word of God, and they don't care about the Word of God, but you still preach the Word of God, regardless of what they think this is my whole point because that's what's going to be more effective than anything else right when we go preach remember what we did with mark 16 and he said that uh our job is to go everywhere preaching the gospel and the lord is working with us and he's the one to confirm the word mm -hmm. sign and well that 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 brings us right back to where our discussion was a while ago um, when we first started talking about, you know, go go through all the world, go through the world and, and preach the gospel. Yes, sir. Okay. In this day and age, man, that that is we're we're so far from that. <laughs> I mean, we're we're going. People are going into churches, uh -huh. to preach the gospel. Right. That's that's not the world. All you right. know, and, and unless somebody stumble into a church, uh -huh. you know, the gospel is not being preached to to the world. Yeah. Now, when you say world, yeah. you're not talking about those in the body of Christ. No, we're not. <laughs> am, am, am I correct? You are correct. Because, I mean, you get perfected in the ministry, the ministry to teach the gospel in the church right but why is the gospel being preached in the church to those who are already in the church come on now come so on. <laughs> which is my point that we are so far off from that scripture from that mandate Ooh. from that source of, of power that is available for us to reap the harvest right. so uh there's very few people that actually go out and, and preach to God, in, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Well, I think I think um, I think it's true, especially when we sit there and I guess define what we mean by preaching, right? Some people look at preaching as 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 preachers sitting in a pulpit, or is it actually going just going out and sharing, you know, the gospel, you know, sharing with with, with one another out in the world, meaning different saints share with people that's willing to listen and, and letting your life be the gospel right and and, and i guess sometimes we, i think one of the biggest concerns is that we have been so conditioned for religion that we sit there and forget about what the gospel is all about 
Uh, matter of fact, I, I, but the point is, brother, I, said, I think that's the problem is we, we have an image of preaching the gospel. The, the, the image is, 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 is like coming out of a pulpit, right? Or somebody Bible talk. Matter of fact, I, I like the fact that you did it. You know, when you said you first stopped preaching the gospel, you went so out there. I'm sorry, I said, I'm going to say this. Yeah. Only in 2020. Yeah. In other words, how did you, for example, when you went out to preach, you told us, right? It was kind of more militant, right? It was more. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, Shane Hardy, Minister Hardy, we we were <laughs> we were going to the, the the same church at that particular time, uh -huh. and and was in talking about the same pastor that uh, pretty much he, he he his main focus was faith. Yeah, you know, faith of God, faith in God's word, and so I had gotten to the point of God's word said it, yeah. and that was final. So if I saw you saying anything outside of what the Bible said, or I was quick to tell you what the word say. You know, there, there was no uh, no compassion. <laughs> there was no love in it. I was just slicing folks up. Right, right. And so it actually had them running from me <laughs> instead of running and crying. What they say? Oh no, here he come. Get the walking, you know how I want a black man walk down the street, right. and, and, and Caucasian folk walk to the other side. <laughs> I clutch the curses and everything. Else. Hey, That's man. what started happening with me, exactly. especially in my in my work environment and stuff. So yeah, but here's the question: Is why did you think? Who told you to go that way? Who told you to do it that way? You know what I mean? How did you, you were you instructed, you were brand new in Christ then, right? I was not instructed to do that. It was just, I just had such a hunger for the word and I had prayed for someone to actually break the word down and, and teach it in a fashion that I could actually grasp it. Because right. the Bible was talking about these awesome, wonderful, powerful, unimaginary things that were happening and I couldn't relate to it. And so I prayed for that. And then God sent me to the other side of the world, Okinawa, Japan. Right. Right. <laughs> and this brother, Paul Terry, was actually doing that. He was breaking it down. He was teaching. You know, he he, he was more of a teacher than a preacher. Right. And, uh, and so it was exactly what I needed. And once I got it, man, it was just, you know, uh, it was like a drug to me. And so, uh, like I, I was just fascinated that all you had to do was believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and then God's word will manifest. And that's what he taught. And, and, and that's what his foundation was based on. Right. And so uh, that's, that was me at that time. And, and everything around me was falling apart. <laughs> I was standing so strong on God's word, but you know things were happening. Yeah, yeah. you know it, it. It was just, it was just that, that that uh, it was that season for me, I guess. No, I, th I think I think it was a valid uh, hunger, valid desire, yeah, a revelation of God's word. But I guess the question was of delivering his word outside of the church bill, outside the four walls, right? Oh, no. Those, those folks were running from me. You see what I'm saying? There was no, there was no good news in what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't nothing good about it. I was right. slicing them up, man. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. I think that's the problem with someone saying, know the truth, but the truth will make you free. They yeah. free. You know, if, yeah, they're free. If, if, if they're running from us, that means we're not we're not delivering it the right way, right? Correct. Don't do it sold by wives, right? Yeah. Uh, it made me free. It made me free from anybody that would stand around me. <laughs> 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 but the point I guess back is we're supposed 
the church is supposed to go preach the gospel. It is our, it's our life that does it. It's our life. You know, like, and Brother Jackson, you said what he did a long time ago, Brother Jackson, I know it wasn't pleasant, but that time when Brother Jackson picked up a woman running down the street, you know? <laughs> Right. And, and, and then he had the man chase him and the woman in the truck. You know, bro, Jack did the right thing. I, I'm a priest of God for going to the police station. <laughs> right, right, All right. And I'm going to let you get in a safe place. But the fact is, yo, yo, it's almost like the Good Samaritan. There was a situation and you responded. You right. And, and, and I think that's what, what, when we walk this walk in our workplaces, in the grocery store, in our family, is to stay with the truth. But the truth is not beating anybody up in the head, because that Christ didn't do that, right? Christ, Christ just ministered to God. Now Christ did walk down the street sometimes and said, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." Right? Uh, he did beat up on some folks, though. <laughs> he what? He beat on people who were judging other people. Yeah. He beat on people who was trying to work by the law. Yeah, he would have been beating me up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I don't think so. I think Brother Addison, he would have, uh, he would have um, taken a great, op you know, that that opportunity, mm -hmm. and um, sat down with you and and you know how we find in um, and, and there's two particular places recently that I. Uh, have been reading because somebody had, had, had brought it up. Um, one was in uh, is in Matthew, and then the other one is in Romans, I want to say Romans 12. And um, in Matthew chapter five, you know how Jesus clarified the intent of the word, right? Right, with the attitudes. And then in Romans 12, Paul is explaining, um, you know, how we need to, how we need to be with, with one another. Um, as opposed to what the world sees. And I think that probably is what Jesus would have did with you and what he has done with you, Brother Addison, is that, that uh, hey, on the service, because, you know, we know this, this word, man, and it's so deep. Every time we read it, we get additional revelation and, and right. more revelation, and we find more about ourselves and about how far we, uh, uh, how short we are, you know, when it comes to, to um, this walk. Right. And which is why we have to work on it every day. Yeah. Um, and you know, the way I see it, uh, Brother Addison, it's uh, like this guy in business told me one time, you know, do something, give me something to work with, give me something. and then I can go from there. <laughs> so at least you were giving the Lord something to work with, whereas, whereas some folks, you know, hey, they just stay in the middle. They're they not going to the left or to the right, giving God nothing to work with. And mm -hmm. so they're useless, you know? So, uh, uh, and, and not only that, there's probably some as a result of of your passion uh, right. that, uh, may, that they may have have walked away or maybe even ran at times. I'm sure you put something in their mind and in oh, their yeah. spirit. Yeah. And, they, and, and, and so that was, you know, in and of itself may not appear as such as a blessing, but it was. It was. You know, and it still you know, is because you, know, you figure, you know, God's word is not going to come back void. So, brother, you, when you put it out there, Hey, they're dealing with that even to this day. You yeah. know what I mean? Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, I wanted, that's a good point. You know, the scripture you just read was John chapter 8, right? And we're mm -hmm. talking about knowing the truth and the truth will make you free. Yeah. It's, it's ironic, or actually it's by condition by the scripture and the Holy Spirit, that this scenario of the woman caught in act of adultery was the first part of that, that chapter. And I, I want to, Matter of fact, let's use the the um, let's use that as a as a good point about preaching or telling the truth. And and I'll let you, you since you started that one, let you go ahead and read it. It's, you can see it, right? Yeah. Yeah, and and, and and let's use while you're reading it, right? Let's take that perspective what you just said. Let's use that past, the past way, past way thinking, past way of preaching. Cause, cause you might you might be one of the ones that picked up the rock. And that, that sounds like you might be one of the ones that picked up a rock when this situation. I don't know why you want to put me in that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what, though, brother Addison, you ain't the only one. The rest of us would have been right there. Come on, yeah. That's how. Cause that's how. And 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 I'm gonna let you go, but uh, <laughs> but that's what most of us are doing now. 
Yeah. You know, when I say us, I'm talking about that's the mistake that we as Christians are doing or making now. We're picking up that yeah. rock. We picked up a stone and, and we're ready to stone folks for behaving the way they were brought up to behave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and now that they're they're receiving Christ, you know, we're we're, we're still trying to stone them. Exactly. For, for something they've been delivered from. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that there's the, the, the penalty has been paid for and yet we're still trying to we still penalize it. Exactly. Yeah. So that would say the truth will make you free. So go ahead and read that and tell us how this why he you can see why he went into you know the truth and the truth will make you free. Okay. Let's go in this scenario. All right, John eight one. Jesus went on to the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now, Mo, <laughs> I, I, I'll let that go, but I'm going to keep on reading. <laughs> well, <laughs> well I, it was the first time I, I, I noticed that it said, they caught her in the very act, and it was early in the morning. Uh -huh. Somebody was getting that morning groove on. That's what came <laughs> on my mind. Oh, okay. It was early in the morning. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken an adult in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says that? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote in the wrote, wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself, and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast the stone at her. And again he stooped down, and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went on, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus, she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. Now, what I what I like about that is, is to that, that still falls in line. We, for those who are just showing sure us, hey, Sherman. The, for those that saw it, it, in fact, it was saying that we, we start off, everybody, uh, reading the scripture, John chapter 8, where we're talking about the truth will make you free. And then we went into the fact is that the preaching of the gospel is is for the church, the saints, to go out and preach the gospel. But the question is how some of us are taught or perceived to go preach the gospel. We go and preach it with the condemnation piece in there or the judgmental piece in there. And, and and oh, by the law. And that's what Brother Asa Jesus constantly fought them with is the law. You, you, you're preaching the law. You're not preaching the grace, the gospel, which has grace in it, right? And, and, and the point was saying is he would have used even your Brother Jackson or, or us who really pick up a stone and use that as a teaching moment because that's what it was, right? It was a teaching moment.